Whoa, come on. I felt interesting. Eat it though. Just eat it. I'm gonna lock this drag up. It does look like something's kinda happening, doesn't it? There you go. Come on. Come on. Goliath? Or is that a big black? It's a big black. This is the one, Chad. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. This is the one, Chad. That's the target species right there. That's a beautiful black grouper. You gotta love it. This is what I'm like when I get fired up. I love seeing groupers on board. Yes. This is a nice one. Can someone say Twitch fishing records for me? Yes, chat. We got one. So happy we got this guy yesterday. Fish in the reef edge, dropped a whole live grunt on heavy rod. Basically, as soon as we got the hit, all we had to do was winch it up from the bottom. And that's how it's got to be when you're grouper fishing because they are strong. They do not play around. They will bring you down into the rocks and bust you off. So, really, really happy we got that one, people. It's hopefully going to be the first of many. Grouper season just opened on May 1st. So, that's a really good one. I'm really happy about that. So, all right, here we go. Where do we start? I'm going to use both knives depending on what I'm doing on this one. It's a big fish, so I think I'll be able to skin it with, with one knife here. I might have to cut the fillet in half and then skin each side separately. You know what I mean? Yo, Dukers, how's it going? I need a sword like a katana. All right. So for this one, I'm going to, instead of cutting down through like this, I feel like it's going to have big scales and thick skin. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing I usually do and just cut it with my knife tip and make myself a channel that I can cut through. Cutting like this, you don't really dull your knife so bad because, you know, you're cutting the skin from the back side, which is soft. You're not cutting through the scales. You're kind of lifting them up. So our shallow cut all the way down through here. Again, you do not want to cut too deep through the body cavity or else you're going to pop the guts. You could pop the intestines and get all types of duty all over your meat. And you don't like that. What else is happening here, people? Doing good, doing good. All right, all right, all right, here we go. Same thing, poker knife in there. I'm gonna use this other knife, it seems like the tip might be, might be sharper. Poker knife in there, oh yeah, like butter. A shallow cut all the way around the fillet. Right now we're just outlining our fillet. Get that in there, just like that. Once you get to the tail, you can just poke your knife right on through. Pull it on back. And same thing on the bottom. Real shallow cut with your knife tip. I can feel the meat. Oh, it feels so good, people. Oh, okay. Sorry, don't mind me. And then, nice and shallow cut off the bottom of the fish. I'm trying to be a little quieter here, you know. All these people around, I don't want to be screaming and yelling. Getting people upset. So there you go. Basically have it all separated around. Little cut all the way around. That's pretty good. I can get a little bit higher over here, I think. Just like that. Make a deeper cut along the head because we only broke the skin there. And eventually we're gonna be separating that from the fish. And then here we go. You know what time it is. Our nice, long, smooth cuts. The idea is not to do a whole bunch of little repetitive cuts. You wanna do as many, as few, long smooth cuts as possible and that's how you get a really really nice pretty fillet okay here we go people i'm gonna see how many how few cuts i can do okay keep it nice and deep keep the knife straight try to get through there nice how did i do how did i do i missed one bone so the answer is not bad i did pretty good and then i do have to go through again it's so cold which is really really good sorry with the angle not much I can really do about it. 
You're just trying to cut basically to the middle of the fish, and then you'll do the same thing on the bottom half. You should be able to see the vertebrae. You see how, yeah, you can see them all going down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That means I cut deep enough. So here we go. Again, I don't want to cut through the guts. So I'm going to start my knife basically back here. You can kind of see I can get it up in the body cavity a little bit and just make a nice smooth cut and separate the bottom section over here from the, the bones in the middle. So here we go. One nice smooth cut if I can. That was perfect. Just like that. So here we go, people. I'm going to get my... Uh, my knife in here and I'm going to kind of lift the fillet as I go and try to cut through as little of it as I can. What's happening here? There we go, that's more like it. See that, see that, see that? See that, see that, see that? Comes right off. And then here I am at the ribs and groupers have really, really solid ribs. I want to try to break through them. Let's see if I can do this. One, two, Three, we're getting there. Nice, nice, nice. Coming right off like butter. Let's go. Who's talking about not having a sharp knife? Fish fillet. Look at that chat. Doesn't that look awesome? I'm happy about it. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do I'm going to see, I have to skin this, this filet. So the first thing I'm going to do, usually I skin it and then remove the ribs. Because then removing the ribs is easier because you don't have to cut through the skin. But I think if I remove the ribs now, it's going to make it easier for me to skin the whole thing at once. So here we go. Get my knife in here. Try to remove this body cavity. I try to save as much meat as possible. There we go. Boom. Grouper ribs. Nice, nice. Okay, I'm going to see if I can... If I can pull all the skin off of this at once. I think I can. So start here at the back, get underneath the meat, start your knife like that, and then once I get something I can grab onto, a lot of times on a bigger fish, here's another little trick. You can kind of get your knife in here and poke through the skin a little bit. Just like that. And then check it out. I can get my thumb in there, or a finger in there. And that gives me a really good grip on the skin for what I'm about to do right now. All right, I'm, what I want to do is pull the skin against the knife blade, kind of wobble it back and forth. I want to basically leave my knife in place. And just with my left hand pulling this thing back and forth, it slowly but steadily is getting that skin real close to the meat. I'm giving you guys all the tricks today. I'm now starting to push the knife forward a little bit, but still pulling the skin with my with my left hand. And there it is. There it is, people. All in one piece. Some black grouper skin. So the idea is for any of you fish cleaners out there, you can do basically do it your way. But if you see a little tip or a trick that I'm doing, maybe you can incorporate that into what you're doing. And uh and do your thing, you know what I mean? So again, there are little bones, these pin bones, I can feel them with my finger. The last one is right here, and then it's clear after that. So do a little cut right on the right of it. A little cut on the left. I think I basically got them. I might have kind of missed one a little bit, but cut that piece out right there. That has all those bones in it. Let me feel in here. Yeah, I missed one. I feel it right there. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. You're coming with me, Pinbone. Don't even think about it. I'm not eating a fish sandwich with a bone in it. No way. Never. This is our fully cleaned, 100% boneless grouper filet. Very, very cool. Look at all this meat we got off of this thing. Flip it over, see what the other side looks like. Beautiful. Beautiful. Ready to be cooked up any way you want. You could grill it, you could bake it, you could fry it if you wanted to. Although, why would you fry something so delicious and fresh? You could eat as ceviche. You can make sandwiches, you can make tacos, you can slap it on rice, you can slap it on a salad. What else is happening everybody? Sorry if I'm missing anything here. Looks good, that's $35 in a restaurant. $35? Maybe for one little portion. That whole thing would be a lot more than that. Okay, so I'm going to have to cut it up into pieces to get into this bag. And now that I think about it, I might need more bags. 
So this looks like three pieces to me. I'm going to go ahead and cut it right down the middle. Like that. So we have this bottom part right here in the bag. And this top section I'm just going to cut right in half. There you go. Really, really nice. And again, people, I try to keep the meat clean on the fish cleaning station. I try to keep blood and poop off of it so it stays nice and clean. That way I don't have to rinse it with fresh water here at the fish cleaning table. You do not want to rinse your freshwater fish meat with... Uh, I'm sorry, you don't want to rinse your saltwater fish meat with fresh water. Because that fresh water absorbs up into the meat. It lowers the meat quality, causes it to deteriorate more quickly. So what I do is I don't... I just keep it as clean as I can. Put it in the fridge. When I'm ready to cook it, I give it a really, really, really good freshwater rinse and rub down immediately before I season it and start working it. You know what I mean? That's how you keep it fresh for as long as possible.